What's up, everybody? This is Gary G7 Little G Jenkins. Fox Soul, our voice, our truth. What's my voice and my truth? We here. We ain't going nowhere. Accept it. It's like we going through the motions, making love with no emotion. It's like we roomies in the same crib, and this ain't where your heart lives. It's nothing like it used to be. Now your friends don't even know me. I was strangers in our own house. Please tell me what it's all about. Is there someone else? That you've been giving all your love to Honey, I just need to know So we can let these feelings go So in love with each other Now it's like I'm freaking invisible Never been so uncomfortable You know this is gonna end Cause I'm missing my best friend Ooh. Love like we used to No way to to do it on the table now it's too much to get a favor you walk the dog and i pick up the sh lately you've been full of beer mm -hmm. i miss the smell of your soul food cooking for oh, your mac and cheese is really smoking you know this is gonna end cause i want your love Feeling, let me hear you say, yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, if you're going through the motion, let me hear you say, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. If you won't take it no more, can you say, yeah, yeah? yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, if you wanna make it work, let me hear you say, yeah. yeah. Ooh, baby. Yeah. We don't even love. We don't even love. Back to doing it like we used to, y'all. Like we used to uh, was produced by Mr. Wiley Morris. Wiley Morris, you might know that name because he is all over Charlie Wilson. Hits. Charlie Wilson, New Edition, Johnny Gill, you know, quite a few people, man. And so when I heard that track, I was like, whoa. Now, I didn't, I didn't write this one, but the team that wrote it with him, oh my God, the song is amazing. And 
the song simply is talking about we don't do stuff like we used to. We don't talk like we used to. We don't kiss like we used to. We don't love like we used to. We don't trust like we used to. We don't play like we used to. We don't date like we used to. We don't lay like we used to. We don't even pray like we used to. Little G is Gary Jenkins from Nashville, Tennessee, born and raised, uh, baby of seven, <laughs> five boys, two girls. Uh, music has been a part of me since the age of five years old. You know, I used to sing when my mama was cleaning up on Saturday mornings, you know, playing her music. You know, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Donny Hathaway, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and so music has always been in me, you know, and I was given some God-given talents at an early age. You know, I started singing at five and then went to church at seven. <laughs> and uh, then I had the opportunity to sing with Dr. Bobby Jones, Bobby Jones Gospel, at eight years old. And so... I'm on stage with the likes of like James Cleveland, Shirley Caesar, you know, and Bobby up there, et cetera, and, you know, and many more of them. <laughs> and so I started picking up instruments. You know, I remember I had this little organ, it was a little organ, and it had the chords over here, and it had a little book with it. <laughs> so I was picking out stuff on that, you know, and the family was just, you know, just letting me do my thing, but they were realizing, hmm, something's up, so through school, I started learning the theoretical part of music, you know, so I can read when I want to, <laughs> when I need to and everything and stuff like that. And uh, Prince became my musical mentor, rest his soul, and he rest in peace. I used to always say, me and the other Gary in the group, we say that Prince is our brother from another mother. <laughs> yeah, man, but I'm a multi-instrumentalist like Prince, and so therefore I really kind of honed in on him, you know, because he's the king. He's a beast. And I wanted to be that same beast. So the rest is history. I started doing talent shows and, you know, acting in school and boom, boom, boom. I became the church musician, you know, in my church, you know, and I was still singing with Bobby Jones, you know, through school. Got to college. Uh, I was a business administration major, but I changed up on that. And, uh, I decided I wanted to go and major in music, you know, with an emphasis on piano and voice. So I had the opportunity to do opera. So I did a couple of operas in school. And so that's what's helped me to be able to maintain my voice over all these years, you know, that I've been in the game. You know, thank God I still sound close, very close to the same, you know, from when I started. So, you know, I never, you know, forget the blessings that came with that. Then uh, I'm in church, but then I get a call from my managers at the time in Nashville, two lovely ladies, Miss Connie Danell, rest her soul, and um, Keith Sweat was holding auditions mm -hmm. for a new lead singer. And the way that came about, Lonnie and Louise Ferguson, Lonnie was... Keith's road manager. And so Lonnie and Louise had gotten a hold to the guys. They were already a five-man group. You know, and they were winning talent shows and, you know, Southwest Cab and Columbia High and all of this, et cetera, et cetera, stuff. And uh, they had a few clientele changes and everything and stuff like that. And then when Keith went to a barbecue over to Lonnie and Louise's house on the 4th of July, <laughs> so they were down there in the basement singing to some kids and Keith walked in you know how Keith is what's up Keith pop <laughs> so you know so he went in and he started singing with the guys and everything and so they did a song on his album and it was called give me what I want and then after that that's when he decided to hold auditions and it was about nine of us that auditioned so I drove down from Nashville Ended up getting in. So January 1992, on my birthday, January 26th, Super Bowl Sunday, I moved to Atlanta. And so I was with Lonnie Louise over there because they were the managers. And so, you know, we just started gripping together. You know, we just started gelling and everything. And so 
the rest is history. We started doing the sessions and went out to L.A., you know, recorded for three months, came up with the first album, Lose Control, and then now here we are now. <laughs> Yo, this is G7, Little G. Get ready for more Tracks and Tales. See, I'm the oldest, so, you know, they were, you know, getting some things from me, you know, like when I first, when I auditioned and stuff and everything, and I spent the night and stuff like that, the guys stayed around, and so we were all up there, you know, being very camaraderie with each other, you know, they were, you know, getting information from me and stuff, you know, and just, we just started, just started planning, just started gelling, you know, to get together as brothers, you know, as a brotherhood, you know, we got to deal with each other, you know, five different emotions, <laughs> you know, five different personalities and everything and stuff like that, you know. But I was I was received with open arms from everybody. You know, and so with it with it being like that, there was no egos in the play or anything like that. It was just like matter of fact, they had a whole lot to do with me being the one getting picked. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Cause they was like, Man, what you talking about? Who? Who else? What? Nah, that one right there. Him. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I hope everybody's listening. It's feeling real good right now. See, I am Gary G7, Little G Jenkins. <laughs> and right now, I want to take you back to the 90s, 90s, 90s. When music was all about love making, all about our women. <laughs> and what we used to do to you, what we used to say to you, how we used to make you feel. <laughs> As it goes a little something like this. Last night, we had an argument All the things I said I never may end Now, baby I didn't mean to make you cry no, I didn't mean to make you say Bye-bye, baby Won't you let me look inside Start making it feel real good I wonder if you feel it Like loving me, sexing me, holding me Kissing me, squeezing me Ooh. Say yeah. yeah Say yeah Yeah Let me lick you up and down Till you say stop Let me play with your body, baby
Sweat man, I remember getting frustrated one time because he had this thing with me. We would record one part 50 times, you know, just pushing me, just kept pushing me, kept pushing me, kept pushing me. And then sometimes he would end up going right back to the first take. And I'm like, man, what was I talking about? Man, I was starting to get heated, starting to get hot. <laughs> but you know, but I sat back and then I realized that that was actually helping me. I was not gonna fail. You know, I was giving it to him 100% every time, every time, every time, every time. And he was loving it. You know, I sort of felt like a little toy sometimes, but then at the end of the day, when it came out, look at the project that came out. You know, so I applaud him, you know, and I appreciate him, you know, for nurturing it like that, you know, with the producer teams that were there. And then uh, when we went out to LA, we started with Happy Days. That was the first single, Happy Days. And uh, you know, when we were when we were recording and everything, it was grooving, man. It was like, so like, yeah, this is gonna be dope. You know, the Teddy Riley's coming around, you know, all that other kind of stuff, you know. I said, this is gonna be kind of dope. All of us was church boys, right? The last song we recorded was Freak Me. <laughs> now <laughs> Everything else was cool. But we was like, Keith, hold on. Wait a minute. Our mama's gonna whoop up her hands, man. What you, we can't do that, Keith. We were so scared doing that song, but I got over the scaredness and I went on in the booth. You know, we did it, we knocked it out. Number one. It was like, woof. You know what that felt like? Man, that was such a rush. You know, Happy Days was doing this thing anyway, you know, and then we started, you know, going out a little bit with Keith, you know, doing shows and things like that and stuff like that. But man, it was, man, I remember the first time I heard Happy Days on the radio, I had gone back to Nashville, Tennessee, right? And I borrowed my brother's car. It was a Caprice Landau, a white Caprice Landau. <laughs> And um, the song came on the radio, man. I had to pull over. I got up out the car. You know, we ain't had no cell phones yet. <laughs> I had to get up out the car, man. I was running around the car, man. Man, over there by Parkwood Villa. That was right down, the, not too far from my house, man. I got to the house and I was like, y'all, y'all, they just played our song on the radio. They just played that song on the radio, man. It was crazy, yo. And it just started going from there. But when that freak me hit, it was over. It was over. We have arrived. Elvis is still in the building. <laughs> man, we got the band together, man. We had to have the hottest band in history. It was crazy, man. We had the huge band, everything, man. It was everything, ooh. And the touring was where you really start making your money, you know, when you come into a group like that, man. So we in rehearsals with the band and everything, all that, man. It was just going, you know, and they putting together the transitions and all of that kind of stuff, man. And you, you get a chance to be involved in it and everything, you know. And with me knowing, you know, the theory, you know, and music and stuff like that, you know, I could call stuff out if if one of the band members was playing a bad note or making a mistake, you know, and stuff like that, you know, and they really admired that kind of thing, you know, so I was kind of always close to whoever the bands was at that time, you know, because they would look to me, you know, for something, especially when new cats come in and stuff, I'd have to go over and play the bass part, play the bass part or, you know, for them sometimes, you know, or play the keys, you know, and stuff like that. And, and drums and stuff so but yeah man it was it was a great experience a beautiful experience you know we toured for a year and a half on that first tour overseas and everything we did almost every city in japan <laughs> so 
beautiful experience. Come celebrate music culture on Tracks and Tales exclusively on Fox Soul. I believe R&B kind of got watered down, you know, in a sense. You know, hip hop had a thing of, you know, the original hip hop and some of the future hip hop, what did they use for their song? R&B, right? So for as much as it seemed like R&B was being kind of pushed back or putting a foot on, it was still able to be rotated because, you know, even though the younger kids didn't know it where it came from, but then later on they found out, you know, and so I believe it's coming around full circle because I have like 16 year olds and 18 year olds, you know, coming up to me now talking about, hey, you, I'm like, how you know that? The mamas and the papas are still playing it. And then when they hear these samples and stuff and they hear all that going around, oh yeah, the true R&B is really coming back. You know, it got watered down, you know, because, you know, you had some, you know, newer people who weren't nurtured as much as we are. You know, the labels, they got rid of artist development. You know, you didn't have that anymore. And it's like the kids today, are just thrown out there, you know. So that that started, and then all of the people who were at the A and R positions, you know, in these labels, it started to dwindle down. They were gone, and then the younger set comes in, but they didn't facilitate to these younger cats what the business really was and what it really is, you know, because everybody was looking to stay in whatever's hot at that particular time. But then when it ain't hot no more, then they throw you to the curb. You know, that's why in all of our music, we have always decided to do longevity music, no matter what it was. And meeting in my bedroom, still here. Yeah. Ooh. You know, fellas, sometimes I pride can get in our way, you know what I'm saying? Oh, baby. But ladies, I just wanna let you know, I see you, I feel you. Mm. You told me that you loved me, and you turned around and showed me that you really for real, yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe my own eyes, Maybe I made you cry, but you're still right here with me, yeah. Through the good and bad times, through the songs with sad lines, girl, through heaven and hell, yeah. Through the song and the rain, mm -hmm. through the pleasure and pain, my full time blessing.
my baby, that's my baby, that's my baby. That's my baby, that's my baby, that's my baby. That's my baby. It's my first single, y'all. That's my baby. G7. No parole. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you to go out and get it. It's on all platforms, baby. That's my baby. The video. See ya. That's my baby uh, from my project, uh, written by me and produced by J. Hot Scott. Um, he's in Columbus, from Columbus, Ohio. I mean, Columbus, Georgia. <laughs> What's up, Hot? Man, gifted. He's gifted, man. He's worked under Teddy Riley, you know, and, uh, you know, a few others. But, you know, that's the, the main thing. And his, his whole family, actually, you know, his uncles. You know, Zach Scott, uh, uh, Mucho's, Mucho Scott, Walter, Mucho Scott. Uh, you remember the song, Rough Neck? Gotta watch you, gotta you the rough neck. Gotta watch you. Yeah, that's, that's Walter Mucho Scott. So, you know, he comes from a lineage of it. So he's a beast. He's a beast producer, man. And uh, so he played this track for me. We, we worked on a bunch of things together. You know, we've been getting together and doing some stuff. And... I was at the studio one night, man, and he hit this track, man, and it just started flowing out. Man, that groove was set in so hard on me, man. And so I pulled out my guitar, I laid a guitar track, and it was like he put the microphone in front of me, and it's like the words just started coming off from that groove, man. It just hit me so hard, man. That's my baby. That's that's my baby. And then he stopped it. He said, what'd you say? I said, that's my baby. That's my baby. My baby girl. And from there, we laid the hook. Verses just came popping out. G7. No parole. G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. I'm the seventh child. Seven is the number of completion. So that's why it's G7. No parole. I'm sentenced to life in music. I ain't getting out. Really entertainment, period, but I'm sentenced to life in music. Lining my ducks in a row and everything. And um, so that's first at hand, but I'm also getting ready to do some movies dinner and a movie <laughs> yeah so i got a couple of movie projects on deck and uh a lot of people may not know but i've been doing a lot of acting too i was in tyler perry's play you know i worked with jacarius johnson you know some of the big names from the stage plays and all of this kind of stuff you know i started in 97 like i said you know, doing that. So that's always been a part of me. That's why I say entertainment, period, you know, because that's one of the things I really want to, you know, get to spread in my wings in a little bit more, you know, transitioning. You know, you have to, you know, keep the clock turning because when that second hand stops, you're in trouble. So you got to do everything you can to keep that second hand on that clock rolling. So that's what I'm doing, man. I'm a, I'm a Jamaican. <laughs> and I'm the new James Brown, the hardest working man in the industry right now. You know, that's that's what I want to be no noted for. You know, there's one thing about G. He ain't gonna stop. Well, I was always dibbing and dabbing here and there because I was always thirsty to be doing something, but I wasn't doing it whereas I have to do a gig. You know, so I was still, you know, I was still right. I'm a writer. I was still right. I was still record myself, but I was recording myself. I got Pro Tools. Ah, my 
name is Tanya Nolan, um, born and raised on an island in Galveston, Galveston, Texas. Currently been residing in Houston, Texas for about 20 plus years. Um, growing up in Galveston was, you know, I had lots of cousins. So I had my two sisters, I'm the oldest, so I always it's very family oriented. It was always something to do. Um, played outside quite a bit, knew when the lights was to go out, you know, those outdoor <laughs> lights, had the time to come home. Oh, this is how I got into um, singing. So I was around 15 years of age and I wanted to make some extra money. So I asked my mom, is it okay for me to um, get my own job? She quickly said yes and gave me the Galveston Daily newspaper. So I'm looking inside the newspaper and I'm passing all these things up. And one thing that caught my attention, it was um, a band. Um, he was looking for a female vocalist. The name of the guy is named Willie Turner, um, also known as Dello. And the name of his band at the time was called the Down to Earth Band. So I call, so I, um, I called the number and um, I said, hey, sir, I'm responding to your ad. <laughs> he said, okay. He said, well, what you got for me? What song are you gonna sing for me? So um, I was already in the bathroom for some reason. I have no idea why. So I'm thinking about acoustics. I'm like, what am I going to sing for this man? So I don't remember what song I sung for him, but he enjoyed it. And he said, well, um, how old are you? I said, I'm 15. He said, I need to speak to your mom because he, did, he wanted to make sure it was me singing over the phone and not some adult. So she brought me to another edition in person, and that is how it started. And I have not stopped. So I was singing in nightclubs, hole in the walls, private parties, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. <laughs> well, not as much when I was at 15. The Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday started in my 20s. But my mom would allow me to do weekends. She would allow me to do um, Friday nights and some Saturdays with these bands for years until I was able to, you know, just branch off on my own, and I haven't... I haven't stopped well since. So listen, so I would get these CDs, okay, and I would burn my um, own personal singles that I recorded myself and I would put Tanya Nolan on it. And so I would go to um, other people's shows and um, they knew me at that time of the name of Q-T-E-E, -E, Q-T, and would say, hey, Q-T, I would say, okay, can I get up there and do a song tonight? Um, so they would allow me to get up there and sing a song. I would rock it, at least I thought I did. And then I would say, hey, I got CDs for sale, $10. These are my originals. This is when I was in between jobs. And I would be, I would hope that I would sell at least 20 CDs, depends on how many people was in there. So I would do that two, three days out of a week. And so I, that was part of my, part of my hustle back then. When we kiss, I go in to outer space, you and I feel my emotion, you center my whole world, mm -hmm. we're to be together forever, babe, but to build this house on life. I, it's baby boo I'm tired of playing the fool I swear to run through Yeah, yeah, cause you don't You don't deserve a good woman Like me, no You don't You don't deserve a good woman like me, no Cause I gave you my world But to drown me in lies You murdered my spirit Yes, you did You got the best from me, yeah Now the real you I see mm -hmm. You and me supposed to be together Forever, baby I don't understand
The name of this particular song is Good Woman. Good Woman was produced um, to me from a gentleman named Lab Box. And Lab Box, um, he said, T, T, I got a song for you, I got a song for you. I'm like, okay, it's coming from him. I, it, it, it must be serious, you know, because Lab is serious about his stuff. So I got the track, I'm listening to it. And I'm like, it, it was a reference track. And I'm like, this is dope. And the guy that, one of the guys that was singing on the Reference Shack, his name is Joel Leo Polk. Joel Polk is also one of the writers on the song. And it was, um, Joel was the one that was singing the song. And so I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. I said, man, I'm a top that. Joel is blowing his butt off, right? So um, got in. It was me and Lab in, in there, and um, he was like, okay, T, I said, I'm about to knock this out. I love this song. So got there, Joel came, and then another young lady came um, also, and she's um, doing some of the harmonies on the um, track also. But Good Woman was extremely spiritual. I remember, I remember a feeling um, when I was behind the booth and um, Lab is critiquing me on some stuff. He was like, okay, do it this way. I don't know, you could push it. Like he was, he was bringing stuff out of me that I had no idea that I had in me. It was, it was, just, it was just different. Like each producer is different, but he's one of the ones that actually bought the best out of me. So I remember being in behind the booth and I'm singing it and I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling it and I'm like, you know, something happened and then something just belched out of my it was freestyle and, and lab knows not to turn off the record button because he, he never know what i'm going to do most of my producers know this so they know by default i better keep it on because i missed this last time so they always keep it on so it was no 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 and then no 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 All it is, I'm like, where the hell all this come from? Like, I was, where did it come from? I know where it came from because it was so spiritual. It's like we had goosebumps, and it's like I was just going with the flow. It was like flowing like um, milk and honey with a little, uh, uh, throwing a little bit of sugar in it, but you really don't need the sugar. It's really more healthy than just the milk. Y'all get where I'm coming from. That was the feeling that I had, I'm like, what is this? And then my body was just, um, my body was just calm. And I, 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 I felt incredible. It felt like I had a cleansing or something. And I'm like, if this is what baptism is, I want more of it. That's the feelings that I had. Come celebrate music culture on Tracks and Tales, exclusively on Fox Soul. Okay, so it started with childcare. My sister, baby sister, gave me a call, Letitia Nolan, and she said, um, Tanya, 
um, such and such is um, about to give up her building and it's a daycare center. And she wanted to know if, if, I, if I wanted to get it. And she was talking about herself. And so my sister was including me. It was going to be me and my sister. And I said, um, that's something to think about. Thought about it. We talked more about it. Got into it. Um, so the first child care center is Nolan's child care center. And then, um, my sister ventured off, um, she, and then she did her own thing in child care. So Nolan's child care center, that was the first one. When I met my wife, um, Kimberly, um, we paid about, I think 20 K for this class. It was 20, 10, I think 10 K a piece or 20 K a piece, 20 K. Yeah. 20 K a piece for this class to get knowledge or knowledge on, um, real estate. And it was worth every every single penny because we we learned so much, not just about real estate, about taxes, about so many things. And so um, this is what happened. On the flight back home, <laughs> on the flight back home, I got a knock at my door at Nolan Child Care Center. And it was a guy named Paul. I won't say his last name. He recently passed, I think, a couple of years ago. Paul. And he worked for, well, he was helping out a gentleman named Ricky Taylor. And um, Ricky Taylor was sending Paul out to go. Um, he Ricky sent them to me. I don't know how Ricky found me, and um, gave me a proposal and asked me was I interested in buying um, a childcare facility that's on 10.53 acres. And I said, what? You know, I said, of course, I like to take a look at it. You know, and I'm like, I can't believe this really happened. So to make a long story short, me and Kim went, and we bought the property from um, Ricky Taylor's on 10.53 acres, and it's the largest childcare facility in the state of Texas. And what we did was we upgraded it, um, like 500,000 percent, and um, so many more amenities. And we just a lot. It's a lot that we can say about it. There is um, a golf course, um, fishing pond. Um, we have chickens and goats and hens and, and sheep. Kim won't let, let me get a, a giraffe and um, swimming pools. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving a whole lot out, but um, I came up with the name Ah because the first alphabet is A. Ah, Better Child Care Center, search the search engine, all that good stuff. And so that's how that started. And, and so in between Nolan's and All Better Child Care Center, Nolan's set me up in a sense where I was able to start getting back into my music heavy because it was paying for it. I was financially stable because it wasn't just this daycare. It was other little real estate that I was getting into. Then as I, as it's growing and growing and growing, I met my beautiful wife and then, um, you know, we came across All Better Child Care Center and, and other stuff in between when it comes to like rental properties. And that in itself is why I was able to really relax and just dive into my music because um, I'm financially stable. Now, well, I was always dibbing and dabbing here and there because I was always thirsty to be doing something, but I wasn't doing it whereas I have to do a gig. You know, so I was still, you know, I was still right. I'm a writer. I was still right. I would still record myself, but I was recording myself. I got Pro Tools and all this other stuff. So I was doing it myself until I said, well, you know, let me go ahead and get with some, give us some, some producers. I was ready. I was financially ready. And I said, you know, I should invest in myself. I deserve it. So that's what's been happening up until now. Yeah, some of the people that I admire, oh my God, Prince, controversy, I can keep going. Michael Jackson, human nature. Um, uh, the, uh, what is it? Teddy Pendergrass, Minnie Ripperton, the Bee Gees, um, Phil Collins, Olivia Newton-John, um, the emotions, earth, wind, and fire, Jasmine Sullivan, she's amazing, Layla Hathaway, I can go on and on and on. Those are some of the people that um, I admire and that I feel are true musicians. Pour a mold.
yourself that you are handsome. Tell yourself that you are lit. Your journey is just your journey. Don't you go and compare it. I live a little. Self-love. Track number two is Self-Love. Self-Love is produced by Corey Moe, and this is a single that is not released yet. But Corey introduced um, this reference to me, and I said I got to do this song, and a young lady named Kiera and myself co-wrote it. So self-love is, is very positive. As a matter of fact, I have my kids, um, it's, it's because it's, it's the, the affirmations that's within the song is very empowering. So my kids at um, my facilities, they know this song. So they're singing it during, um, um, before uh, breakfast and then PM snack and then at lunch. I mean, after lunch is our supper. But it's three times a day and they know the song and they'll go home. Mom, you are beautiful. Dad, there is nothing you can do. And it was like, Tanya, they come out self-love. So I say, that's right, that's right. So my kids love the song, and this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to um, perform that song here today. I want my legacy to be, and what I would like to be remembered for is that when they hear a Tanya Nolan record, they know that that is a Tanya Nolan record, that she is truly, her music is truly authentically her. Just know that I don't try to be like anyone else. I feel as if if I even try to be like someone else or to sound like someone else that I am robbing my followers and my fans and most importantly myself. So it's important to me to be authentic and to be true because God made me perfectly just how I am. I'm everywhere that I go. So I'll allow myself to bless myself through blessing others through my music. That's one of the best things that I can give to you because that's one of the best things that I love. Yes, if God allows me to wake up, I got another chance to fix my wrongs or to do better or to do, you know, do whatever. It's like, it's like I'm here. I'm here. What am I going to do today? What do I want to do today? The point is I get to do whatever I want to do.